Hey folks, it's Perry again. So I had a question about how this Hardinge bar feeder worked. So this is a Hardinge, they call it a HF1A, Hardinge Feeder 1A. This is a, a bar feeder that actually fits inside the, the draw tube of the lathe and it's just a, a piece of hollow tubing. It's got some uh, some crushed sleeves right here with uh, O-rings on them and then it's got an adjuster nut here. And it's got all these pieces of aluminum tubing of different lengths and it's so that you can set it up for just about any draw tube configuration. Um, this part right here goes inside the collet so that fits down inside the collet as you can see with this collet it would fit all the way through but basically the idea is you fit it up to the back of the collet so here's a 19 30 seconds collet that fits once I get the crud out you can see it's a snug fit inside the collet okay so it's designed to fit about yay far inside the collet. You could probably make it go a little further, but you can see it's designed to go about yay far. So anyway, what you do is you stick your collet in the spindle. You get your, your feeder or your uh, draw tube set up the way you want it. And then you take this tube, which it has a little, uh, has a little um, piston inside there. So let me pull this out. I had to make this piston because it was missing, and I'll show you why. So there's a piston that has a uh, taper machined into it that centers the tubing. And this looks like, I think it'll feed up to a three quarter inch diameter tube. Uh, that's or uh, material, I think that's what it looks like. And so this is the piston for the large bore. And there's a tube that you can put inside here that reduces it down to uh, 3 8 So for small diameter stuff to prevent whipping, you would uh, fit this down in there. And then it seals at the back end right here. And you put a, another piston down inside here. So I'm going to put this back. Now... The way this works, you take this, you, you loosen these up a little bit, you slide it down in the end of your draw bar, and then you expand, uh, you adjust these until it squishes the O-rings to where it fits in the draw tube snugly. And on the back side right here, it should fit down inside your collet. So let me check that. I won't check that. But anyway, so then this rotary union fits on the back of it. And this is an air operated bar feed. So this whole apparatus sits there, you hook air up to it, and there's two settings on this. Or there's there is a pressure regulator that allows you to adjust it. It's a flow based regulator, so you just adjust this back and forth to change the flow and uh, it increases the pressure. I'm not sure that it's a true pressure regulator as much as just a flow. Um, I don't know. We'll have to play around with it. So there's three positions on that. There's a retract, there's a feed position, and there's a retract position. Now you might ask, what the heck is retract? Well, this has a Venturi uh, vacuum generator built into it, and when you put it in retract, what it does is it blows air out of here and it generates a vacuum which pulls the piston back. Now, you could just stuff your, your tube or your, uh, you know, your round stock down in the collet and slide it back that way. In fact, that's how a lot of bar feeders are. They don't have a retract capability. So basically, you take the bar feeder, you slide it sideways off angle, and then you push the piston back with your bar stock. And then uh, you put it back in there and then you line it up. This is just a real quick, simple add-on bar feeder and it just uses this little piston which can either push or retract and you can, once you retract it, you just take a pair of pliers and you fish the piston out. 
and it allows you to uh, feed up to about a two foot length bar. Um, let's see, what's the, you could put, yeah, you could put, you could easily put a 24 inch bar in there. I'm guessing based on other pistons I've seen, this is a quite a bit shorter than what hard inch design. Their piston is probably, you know, maybe this long. And that way the piston could actually stick out of the end of the bar feeder uh, and feed the material all the way back to the you know, back side of the collet. And that, that kind of approach is something I actually did on this bar feeder. This is just a scaled up version of that bar feeder that I made out of some DOM tubing. And I made my own uh, rotary union here out of some skateboard bearings and a, uh, a quick connect fitting. So, I don't know if I have the piston in here. Uh, yeah, there's got to be a piston in there. So this is just a rotary union made out of a couple skateboard bearings, a couple quad seals. And uh, the, this quad seal right here actually seals down inside the bore. So you screw this down and then it, it fits down in there. Um, the bore was honed with... Um, I can feel that all the way down in there. I, uh, I honed the bore with, uh, I'm not sure if it was a dingle ball hone or just a, uh, uh, a regular uh, hone that you'd use for brake cylinders. Um, let me push that piston out and I'll show you the piston. Now this feeder was designed to accommodate uh, three foot lengths of material, or let's see, maybe that's four feet. Let's see. This is this is made for a 16 C collet. It's 48 inches long, so you could ostensibly put a 48 inch long piece of material in there uh, and still have it sticking out the end. So this is the piston I made for that one. Uh, I did a couple of little tricky things here. Um, so this piston is convex, or you know, has a, a taper in it. It's got a quad seal right here. It's got a little bleeder port here, and then it's got a set screw here. And what I did was I added a little spring inside here. There's another piston down inside. And the intent of this is that this feeder actually screws into the back of a 16C car. So... The way this one's used, you stick it through the draw tube on the Harding CHNC1 and you screw it into the back of the 16C collet. Now, because it's limited in the length that it can push the material, material out, basically this is long enough so that as it comes forward and it hits the back of the actual collet, it's still inside the bore and it'll still retract and, and feed. But, so you've got a little, a little hole through right here and you want your material to feed out or at least the, the bar end to come out. What I did was I put a telescoping pneumatic piston in there so that whenever this hits stop right there, the little tiny piston continues going and it'll actually push the bar end out through the collet right here. So this pushes to here and then the air pressure builds up and then that pushes the remnant out of the collet. So that way you can feed material back into it or you can retract the piston and go all the way back. This machine, uh, I believe it's easier to actually feed the material in this way. There's pretty good clearance. So, and you can just stick the piston inside here. Oh yeah, I remember. There's a little bit of a sharp edge there. There we go. So, and then this union just screws into the back of this. Yeah, I know this o-ring doesn't really do anything. But that's the, uh, that fits the 
the draw tube of the CHNC1 fairly tightly, and then this knurled area goes inside of a bearing that's in the cabinet housing of the CHNC1. So this right here is the part, you know, about 15 inches that's unsupported, but this is, um, yeah, this was uh, eighth wall DOM tubing, I believe. So it's pretty good stuff. And I used the, because there's a quick connect on that, this isn't a quick neck, but I just used this control with that on the CHNC1. So that's how the Hardinge HF1A uh, bar feeder works. And uh, my clone there that's uh, considerably larger for the Hardinge CHNC1. But thanks for watching.